This hand was limped around pre-flop. And I flopped the 10 high flush, the fourth nut flush. And even, uh, even on the flop, I'm sort of thinking I'm beat. Without a suit, this rundown is too marginal to play. In the first position, I open King Jack 10 8. But three bet by a pretty tight player over an insignificant sample. And I'm going to call and give up on this flop. The flop actually got checked around, but I'm still going to give up. Very little chance I win this hand. I do have three not outs to a nine. Theoretically, I can bluff, but. It's sort of uh, risky to try to bluff three people out of a pot. Sometimes you just have to give up on the hand. And I'm not even going to call here. Because for sure, at least the, uh, the pre-flop three better has me to be. Top two in the big blind on a pretty wet board. It was limped around pre. And now we're going to lead out with this hand. Not really a ton of turn cards that I like, but I can get some weak draws to fold. And this is a pretty disastrous turn card, so I'm just going to check fold if he bets. Getting 9 to 1. I'm going to call. And I will probably pay off a, uh, a tiny bet on the river. This nice double suited rundown in good position. It's of course a very obvious raise. It's also nice to have two pretty loose players in the blind. And I am gonna I would have bet the flop, but against a loose passive player, there I really don't see any point in peeling here. So I'm going to fold ace-jack, 10-8 in the big blind. So the first raise out of 14 hands, but my hand's pretty good also, and I'm getting 2-1. to one. And I think I can expect my opponent to make some post-flop errors. And I'm going to lead out here. I don't expect my opponent to raise me very light. I wouldn't be surprised if he peeled pretty light. Pretty good turn, giving me top two to go with my open-ended draw. I'm going to bet again. Now, what sort of hands could my opponent have called me with? Maybe an overpair on the flop. If he had some sort of queen jack, uh, it doesn't really matter what I do. Uh, I'm going to go for a smaller sizing to try to squeeze a call out of like queens or maybe an ace. Usually against a loose player, I think it is a mistake to bet small. Generally, to, to value bet small on the river. Generally, when you have a, a nearly not hand, you're, you're better off 
bedding, bedding closer to the size of the pot. But in, in that scenario, I felt like it was very unlikely that my opponent had a very strong second best hand. And so I thought I would try to target some small, small sizing to target some very weak hands that might make a cry. Here I've got a pretty marginal hand against a very loose limper. And I suppose I should raise to force this type player out of the pot, as well as to get some value here from these loose callers. And I see little point in trying to bet them out if they had checked to me. Of course, here I am. Double suited fours and then big blind. Not really much going on in this flop. So I pick up uh, pretty bad aces first in. And despite the pretty unlikely possibility of being three bet. I feel like I still have to open this hand. Of course, the times I am three bet, it's very nice. And not much really to do on that flop. After a min raise and two very loose calls, getting six to one, you know, I think I can make a profitable call here despite the fact that my hand is somewhat marginal with a little three cluster. The turn I pick up not hearts. So I've got eight, seven absolutely not outs, nine, nine absolutely not outs. And probably if somebody flopped a really big hand, they would have bet. Maybe ace 10 is good. I see very little point in betting here. My opponent's not going to fold a better hand. He might, might call with a worse one, but I don't see any value in a bet there. Ace King Queen 9 in the small blind against a field of very loose limpers. I'm going to raise despite my positional disadvantage simply to capitalize on my equity edge against the field. Not only should my hand be significantly stronger than the, the wide range of hopeless hands these guys are limping in with, they're also liable to make some post-flop errors as well. Flop, pretty good. Top pair, second nut flush draw, and a gutty to the nutty, so I bet. And if Mama puts all in, I don't see how I could fold. Now the turn is an interesting card. I think I still have to bet. He could have a jack. Even if he has a jack, I've got some outs. And if he's got like a wrap or something like that, I have to bet or some sort of made hand. And there's only one SBR left, so what choice do I have? All right, kings after this player limps in. I'm gonna raise this hand. 
And I might have to consider folding to a three bet as virtually all the players at this table through that only kind of rarely. This limp re-raise line looks a lot like aces. But this player did also just lose a smallish pot the last hand with aces. Oop, free race. Well, I'm going to give credit to the passive player. The nice thing is, these guys are both non believers, so there's a pretty good chance we see this hand at showdown. Suspense builds, and in fact, he did have bases. And a marginal four card hand here, or a middle card hand on the button. I think I can over limp profitably here. These guys are playing such a wide array of hands. And of course, I do have. The button. I flop middle set and an open ended draw. A truly powerful hand, which I'm probably just going to stack off with to any action. Because even if my opponent does have queen queen, then I should have still. 30% equity, and of course, the, I crush every other hand except possibly 7843. Pick up a flush draw on the turn, and I'm, I'm favored over 3 4 here. Probably my opponent had queens and fives, maybe, probably queens and fives. I am not going to open this hand in the cutoff. I would, of course, if the king uh, was the king of diamonds and the eight was the eight of clubs. Kings in the big blind. I've got a very loose razor and two loose collars. And it's very tempting to three bet this hand. Certainly double suited, I would. And I'm really not sure if calling or raising is the right decision there. There's no question that I have a very nice range advantage. I would have raised myself if Lamar had folded or called. But I really think that this passive player flopped three of a kind twos. Maybe he's got a big draw. Uh, I mean, because of the, the odds he's getting from the pot, probably he could do this with some hands aside from a two. But I think a two is still... Pretty likely holding from him. Double suit of the ace queen with two high suits. I think this is a profitable open. And I'm going to bet here. I think most of the time, neither of my opponents flop three of a kind. So it's worth the, the half pot risk to 
see if I can take down the pot right away. Now, I have to at least call here, because despite the fact that my opponent has a very tight raising range, I'm getting two to one, and I have a very strong hand myself. And I'm going to lead out on this flop. I've got 10 not outs, four sevens, four queens, and two kings. I could have check raised too. Check raising seems pretty viable. I don't like to try to check raise passive players too much. And I think it's unlikely my passive opponent is going to raise me a lot. There's a pretty decent chance Kings is still the best hand also. Let's pick up aces. Not, uh, not horrible aces. Got a nut suit and two potential straights. Of course, if I get three bet, I will four bet it. And I guess I'll start by checking here. Could also make like a small bet. I'm not too keen to just start calling down versus really any of these players. The only draw that I fear is the pocket pair turning under full. And I think I have to value bet here. And fold to any raise, even like a min raise. So a marginal rundown with a double gap at the bottom. But it's enough to overlimp the button at any rate. And if, say, this guy were to pot it and they would call, I would call as well. I flop middle pair, open ended, four not outs. Enough to continue getting six to one. Turn two pair, completes two possible straights, queen 10 and 10 7. I'm going to make a small bet here. And I think I'll just check back the river. Uh, should I bet like 75 cents? Then bet the flop, check call the turn, check the river. You could have like kings up, take like a slow line. Yeah, should have bet. Unfortunately, while I was deliberating whether or not to, to value bet 75 cents, the action player left. Although that guy, he's a little too aggressive to be on my left anyway. But well, this, this guy is definitely not a great replacement. So. Moral of the story is don't don't tank when you're thinking about value betting 75 cents on the river because the, the fish will get frustrated and flee to another table where you can play some fast-paced, juicy, heads-up action. 
So I, I did the flop here, the nuts with a a redraw to bigger nuts. Seven, I can hit a seven. And I'm gonna bet a little over a half pot. Hopefully my sizing will throw my opponents off a little bit. They might uh, not put me on the nuts here. Turn's getting a little more draw heavy. But I have river the nuts too. Very nice. And all right hand in the small blind, ace king queen eight with one suit. Unfortunately, the eight is dangling. When you have a three card gap uh, with two cards above the gap, the bottom card plays really no role in the hand. And I'm going to fold these queens in position. Maybe I should call. He's got a relatively tight range, and I do have a dangler. Might be some reverse and fly to odd situations if I hit diamonds. And a queen's pretty rare to flop. I do have position, so I might be able to take the pot away from him if he shows weakness. But I'm just... Eights and sixes on the button is a pretty good hand to raise with here. Now, my opponent is extremely passive, and I played with him heads up. He also makes some um, very loose flop calls. Of course, if this regular opens the small blind, I will three bet. You'll note I'm only 40 big blinds right now. It would be phenomenal if this player were to time out and I could play heads up with Fenner. But alas, that is not to be. Going into the flop with a 3 SPR. And it's going to be tough to get away from, from any flop. If I bet only have, let's say I bet $5 and a 6, then well, my opponent folds, so life is alright. If the regular opens the button, I will fold. Like so. And I am going to add on in order to Cover Fenner, and I like to add on when I'm in the small blind and going to be in the big blind next hand, or the button next hand, not the big blind. Double suited fours on the button, an extremely marginal hand, but I am going to be able to show a profit with it against this extremely loose passive player. And kings and nines, really safe to bet. Strong double suited hand, despite the dangler. This is a much, much stronger hand than I need to 
open in the cutoff. Pretty wet board, but I am going to bet anyway. And full to a check raise. If my opponent calls, uh, I'd probably shut down on most turns. Certainly, I will not be shutting down on that turn. Seems extremely unlikely that I do not have the best hand at this point. 